What is up Coretics? So after playing the Crew Motorfest for about a week now, I figured I'd give a proper review as to whether or not you should buy it, and if it's a good game or not in general. So the biggest thing everyone is comparing this game to is obviously the Forza Horizon series, and I won't lie, the Motorfest festival style area is very similar to the Horizon Festival in Forza Horizon, plus a similar open world concept, etc. So yes, I will admit it feels very similar to Horizon when you're playing this game. Now unlike the original Crew and Crew 2, this game is actually not set in the usual scaled down full US map. This time they went a different route and decided to make a smaller map that has better detail, but it's set in the Hawaii Islands of Oahu this time around, so no massive US map, it's set in one location. And this sort of reminds me of the original Test Drive Unlimited series map, which was originally set in Hawaii, so this game definitely gives me some of those TDU 1 and 2 vibes in that regard, which is nice. And it has pretty good detail in certain parts of the map. I especially love how you can break most of the smaller barriers, fences, trees, light posts, etc. Very similar to Forza Horizon. However, the map is definitely way too small for an open world card game in 2023, at least in my personal opinion. Now, we could possibly see a map expansion in a future update, but at the time of launch, I personally think the map is way too small. Continuing to the cars. So the car selection I think is very good with about 600 cars in the game. However, notable brands like Alfa Romeo, Lexus, Rolls Royce, etc. are not in the game. And while some brands have a lot of cars, others only have a handful, with most of them just being different reskin variants of existing base cars. It's still better than Need for Speed in regards to car selection, but I think Forza Horizon definitely has a better selection due to having more unique cars and less reskins. However, remember that this game also has boats and planes, just like the Crew 2, which is a nice feature that allows you to explore the map in different ways, and even compete in events with these as well. Now, continuing to car customization, the main strength of the Crew 2 was definitely the visual customization, which has mostly been carried over into the Crew Motorfest, which I'm pretty happy about, but that also means that most of the cars are kind of the same. Now in regards to internal performance modifications, the system from the Crew 2 is basically brought in the same, I mean there's some slight adjustments, but it's mostly the same 7 internal performance mod types that you can do to pretty much every car, with the random annoying spawn perf level number of parts that you can only get from completing races in certain events, which is a very long grind to get a car maxed out, because most of the time you're going to get a part that's really close to the max perf level but not quite there I, I just don't like this system I prefer just buying the parts outright and obviously in this game there's no engine swaps drivetrain swaps forced induction mods etc I really wish they would have found a way to integrate that into the game but anyways continuing to exhaust notes I think most of the cars in this game sound good a lot better compared to the crew to a lot of improvements but some of them I think are not very good. A great example of this is the 2020 GT500, which sounds way too high pitched in comparison to its real life counterpart. And lastly here for the cars, we have handling. Now obviously handling feel is very subjective, uh, but Forza Horizon and Gran Turismo have arguably the best and most realistic handling of any car game. And then obviously you have the other end of the spectrum with Need for Speed, which feels very arcade-ish because it is basically an arcade racer. So what's the Crew Motorfest like? Well, the Crew 2 I think was pretty terrible. I was never really a fan of the way cars drove in the Crew 2. But in the Crew Motorfest, I think the cars drive a lot more realistic and less arcade-ish, especially if you have the right settings. Now, it's no sim racer like Forza or Gran Turismo, not even close, but it's definitely not an overly arcade-ish like Need for Speed, for example. I'd say it falls somewhere between Need for Speed and Forza slash Gran Turismo, which honestly I think is a nice balance and definitely a major improvement over the Crew 2, which makes the cars a lot more enjoyable to drive with a lot more feedback. Now, in regards to graphics, 
personally, I think they're very good. Reflections, lighting, map, etc. The only thing that I think needs improvement is some of the water effects with the way it reacts to the cars. And of course, the controversial thing that most people are talking about, the lack of working mirrors. Now, continuing to game progression, for those of you who don't know, if you play the Crew 2, it will actually give you the option to transfer your cars from your old Crew 2 game, and the visual customization options from those cars will be brought in as well. However, it will not transfer your internal modifications from your cars or your money either, or any of your performance parts. Again, only the visual parts that were on your cars and the cars themselves. Now, this game doesn't really have a story per se. You basically just do racing events called playlists that have their own theme. Then, of course, the typical free mode events like speed traps, slaloms, etc. And then for the online events, you have online races, live summits, etc. And that's pretty much it. A decent amount of things to do there, but I feel you'd get pretty bored of it after playing it for a couple weeks or a month, but that's just my opinion, I guess. So now that we talked about the general comparisons and the concept of the game, let's go into the negatives. So firstly, you cannot change the license plate on any of your cars. It's forced with the Crew Motorfest license plate thing, just like the old Crew games. Basically, every game nowadays allows you to change this, but sadly, this one does not. Next up, we do not have houses currently in the game like we did in the Crew 2. I think this is a major missed opportunity from Ivory Tower. I used to love putting some of my favorite cars in my house garage and customizing them in there, interacting with them in there, opening the doors and all that stuff. It just made the game feel a lot more realistic. Where in this one, the only building you can enter is the Motorfest car meet. That's pretty much it. There's no other accessible building in the entire game for some reason. The only place you can customize your cars is in the main menu with this white background. I don't know, it just doesn't feel as immersive customizing your cars in a plain white background compared to a garage or nice custom shop, for example. Anyways, continuing, there are no cops in this game, which is a real shame. Now, this was the same issue with the Crew 2, there was no cops in that game either, but there were cops in the Crew 1. I feel adding cops would have made this game feel a lot more realistic, a bit more of a challenge at random times. Just a real shame that they weren't able to incorporate them into this one either. Continuing, another unfortunate thing is that we have the same custom wheel options from the crew too. It's like 80 wheels roughly. They didn't really give us any new ones, which I think is a real shame. But yeah, those are the major negatives there, plus the other things we already discussed before, like the small map size some of the inconsistent exhaust notes, the lack of engine swaps, forced induction, conversion options, etc. So with all that said, what do I think of this game overall? Well, in general, for a 2023 car game, I think it's actually pretty good. All things considering, I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10. I think if it had a larger map, houses, cops, and more in-depth internal modifications for the cars, this game would probably be a solid 8 or 9. I definitely think Ivory Tower and Ubisoft are headed in the right direction with the Crew series. They just need to build upon this platform, and I think they'd have a really solid game on their hands. So yeah, if you're looking for a newer car game that has good graphics, good visual customization for the cars, and decent handling with the right settings, of course, I'd say the Crew Motorfest is worth considering buying. I think the main thing that holds me back from recommending it fully is the map size. I just think it's too small for a 2023 game. Again, it's possible they might do a map expansion in a future update, they probably will, but for now, I think that's the biggest letdown of the game. But anyways guys, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, especially for those of you who already own the game so that others here can see some of your opinions as well. Thanks again for watching guys, hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.